Hi, I'm Mike from 1A Auto. We've been selling auto parts for over 30 years. Hi everyone, Sue here at 1A Auto. And today in this video, we're gonna be working on this 2008 Subaru Outback. We're gonna show you how to replace the gaskets in a coolant overflow water tube. In this vehicle, you do not need to pull your engine to do this job. We pulled the engine to do head gaskets and to give you a better visual of the repair. So if you need any parts for your vehicle, click on the link below and head on over to 1AAuto.com. Raise and support your vehicle with jack and jack stands or two post lift. We're gonna drain the radiator. We're gonna loosen the radiator drain petcock. There you go. Once that's draining, I'm just gonna pull the clips. Remove the oil drain plug and drain the oil. And don't forget, if you do head gaskets in the vehicle or out of the vehicle, you always have to do an oil change after. Now I'm gonna spray all the exhaust studs and nuts that need to come down from the cross member pipe so they'll be loose enough so no breakage will occur. Remove the battery hold down. Now remove the battery terminals. And remove the battery. Now you can remove your air box. Remove the drive belt shield. Loosen the hose clamps and remove the upper radiator hose. Remove the battery cable from the alternator. And I like to put the nut back on so I don't lose it. Remove the alternator bolts. Remove the alternator. You might need a pry bar to help you out. I'm taking the power steering pump bracket assembly out because I'm not going to drain the power steering system. So I want to take the whole bracket out with the pump, set it aside. Now I'm gonna loosen the AC tensioner belt pulley so I can remove the AC belt. Now I'm gonna remove the AC bracket from the engine block. So what I like to do when I pull an engine, I start in one section and I work myself around. So I took the battery out first just for 100% protection. I knew that I'm not gonna use an AC machine on the AC, so I'm not gonna recycle a Freon. So I left it intact, put my compressor up over here, and the same with the power steering. I didn't wanna make a mess. So on Subarus, it's, it's pretty easy. Just leave the pump and the hoses connected, put it up over there. So now I disconnected my fuel lines, my brake booster line. I've got the starter over here, a couple of heater hoses. I'm still draining the coolant, so I won't do the heater hoses, but I'm gonna work my way over there and, and work that way over, basically. Then we'll lift the vehicle up and I'll work from down below. So this is the return line to the gas tank. So you have your fuel feed and fuel return line. I'll set those up there. So on this side, uh, you'll find a lot of your, your um, imports 
that will have a one main harness so that you don't have to undo the whole vehicle. You just unplug the main harness here. That's a push down on that. Pull that great tab down and the whole harness comes disconnected. But we're stuck on this, so I've got to take this tab out, take this bracket out so I can get the harness to move. So this harness stays with the, the engine and that stays in the vehicle. Disconnect the O2 sensors because it's going to be, the O2 sensors are going to be staying in the front pipe. So that's going to come down from below. So I'm going to disconnect the O2 sensors up here now so that when the vehicle is lifted up, I don't have to struggle with it. There we go. There we go. Remove the bell housing bolts from the top of the block. And then we're going to remove the lower section once we raise the vehicle. I'm going to leave the positive wire right on that starter and just back the starter out and leave the cable attached. Remove the heater hoses. Remove the front exhaust cross pipe fasteners. Then we can remove the cross pipe. Some motor mount, nut and washer, one on both sides. And there's a washer, 14 millimeter. And I'll take all the bell housing bolts out, the starter bolt on the bottom out, and access the torque converter nuts, and then pull the engine. Just so you know, these studs down here will be the only real headache you'll ever have on these. I'm pulling an engine on a Subaru, that's the only nightmare. Once you have drained all the coolant from the radiator and engine block, now you can reinstall the radiator drain plug. We can loosen up the lower hose clamps and remove the lower hose. I have to take the throttle body off to access the torque converter little port. There's a rubber boot there so we can take the torque converter nuts off the transmission torque converter. So I've got four 10 millimeter socket size bolts. So there's the Plastic boot. And I'm going to turn the crank and access, access the torque converter mounting bolts. So the crank bolt, if you need to know, is a 22 millimeter socket. And there it is. It's a bolt. So you have to put pressure on the crank while you go the op opposite way with the uh, I don't recommend turning that crank counterclockwise too much because it takes, your timing belt can skip a tooth. So there we go. Now in this case, I take this bolt completely out. I don't spin around. Okay, there's the other one. So I have to take the AC compressor off because the lovely AC bracket, here's the hook 
for lifting the engine. So easy thing is, is now that the bracket's out, I can get the compressor out a lot easier anyways. There's three 12 millimeter socket mounting bolts on that bracket. So I'm gonna take the coolant fans out. Should take all of 10 minutes if that. I'd rather be rather have it out now than lifting the engine up and say, ah, oh, those need to come out. So that's how you get rid of the overflow tank. Okay, one more. Then we'll just disconnect the electrical part of the fans and pull them out. It's down below here, just like everything, clip. This one's a pull up on the clip, pull it out. There we go. The other hook is in the back. There's a round bracket slot for to put a chain through. Now we've got we got the setup. I'm going to get the engine hoist. Don't forget you need to put a jack under the transmission. Just need to jack it up enough so that that clears because you've got the two studs in the bottom of the transmission. There we go. Now the motor mounts are clear of the frame. Let's make sure my power steering pump's out of the way. Yeah, and those bolts look clear. What we're gonna do is get a pry bar. Go between the housing, pry it free. Cannot forget your torque bolts that I already took out. There's a reason for that. If you drag the torque converter out, you can break the pump seal on the transmission side. I think I'm gonna jack the training jack up a little bit more. There we go. Now it takes the pressure off that bell housing. Hoist. And there you have it. You want to see the stud? These are the two studs I was talking about down below. That's the other reason for the floor jack because you've got to bring the transmission up so that the motor mount bolts clear the cross member. I gotta take the hood prop bracket off. It's no big deal, 10 millimeter socket. I'll just turn it. Now you can take a second, look in the back of your engine, confirm there's no hoses, no cables, no wires. We're ready to go. Make sure your oil pan clears the radiator. And then you slide her out. So this is the transmission torque converter. It's an automatic transmission. If it was a standard, it would just be a clutch pack and a flywheel. The difference is that you, you don't have anything to unbolt. These are the torque converter mounting bolts to the flywheel. So you wanna make sure it stayed seated, it didn't pop out. It's a, what they call a sun gear in the center. That sun gear goes through several stages. So you spin your torque converter and push at the same time. And if it had slid out just a snidge, you wanna make sure it seats all the way back. You can also put your fingers back here and you'll feel the roundness against the aluminum housing. This did not move, it's seated right where it should be.
So now the engine's on the stand. I've got a coolant bucket down there because I keep tipping it, getting some of the coolant left out of the water pump and the block, it's just draining. I'm gonna start, you have to remove the intake. So let's start by removing plug wires. I like to leave them attached to the coil, so it's no big deal. I'm probably gonna end up replacing them anyways. I think that coil is a 10 millimeter socket. Now you can get to the connector and disconnect it, pushing on down that tab, squeezing the connector out. There you go. So there's your ignition coil. This only has three mounting bolts with the uh, plug wires on it. Someone has mocked. I don't know. I don't know what these markings mean because they sure don't mean one, two, three, four because they're all like ones. <laughs> and it doesn't matter. The schematic is right there. There is your, your one, three, two, four. So now I'm going to just start to connect, disconnect electrical connectors that I know are not coming out. Here's the crank sensor. So I'm going to disconnect that, push down on the tab. This is a, I do believe the oil pressure. OP switch. Well, it could be a coolant temp. It's only a single prong, though. Just gonna push up on that. Here's the temp. This is the coolant. So that is the oil pressure, and that's the coolant. It looks like we have a purge valve here. Disconnect these grounds. Those are 12 millimeter. I'm gonna put those right back where they came from. So now I'm gonna undo the emission tube. It's a 22 millimeter wrench and wish me luck. <laughs> it's been soaking for a couple of days now. I might have to get some sort of, oh, look at that. Whew. I'm gonna take it out down here also. Seriously, I did not loosen that up. <laughs> that was pretty, uh, pretty cool, I locked out on that. I'm gonna check for blockage. Looks pretty good. I'll probably end up blowing some shop air through there lightly, making sure it's not clogged. I don't think it will be. So now I'm gonna disconnect the connector at the EGI valve and then take the harness off of the mounting. I'm just gonna use a pair of needle nose. You can use a body trim tool. But I'm trying to keep the connector, I mean the plastic connectors. I like to reuse them. You know what, I'm gonna see if I can get a body tool in there. Okay. Looks like a PCV hose. And we have two bolts back here. The harness connected. It looks like a 12 millimeter socket. So now I can disconnect my knock sensor connector. Pull on that tab. So now I'm gonna disconnect the bolt that goes to this bracket because this harness is gonna go with the whole upper intake. I say upper like there's more than one. <laughs> I'm so used to working on the American cars that have upper and lower intakes. There it is. 
So two bolts. Attach that bracket. Same size. So now I know I can just put those in the place so I'm not losing my mind later. I got three connectors over here. Perfect. There is one bolt here that holds these two connectors on for the O2 sensors, but I'm gonna undo the actual intake so when I lift that up and move it aside, I can really get to that bolt a lot easier. Now we're gonna disconnect the intake to the cylinder head or block. So there is four mounting intake screws on each side, two in the back here and two in the front. 12 millimeter socket. I'm just gonna slide these out. They all should be the same length. When I come over to this side, I see that there's more connectors I need to undo in the front. So I've got the cam sensor, another solenoid, Okay, now those should all lift up with the intake. I'm gonna undo the same two bolts on the front and then two in the back. Four total. So now I can move my intake up. And like I said, this bracket right here, but now with the intake dismounted, I have a better chance of getting in there with my extension and socket. Because the heads are going out, I'm not gonna put the bolt back in there. Let that come through. Okay, we have one. So you can see the harness comes right out. The whole upper harness comes out with the intake. It's bolted down below. The fuel lines from each injector assembly are underneath. In the injectors, everything stays put. So here is the intake gasket for the right side bank. And if you look closely, you see the rust on that. That didn't just happen, that has been a part in sucking air into the intake. So this car probably had a good hesitation and a, a surging idle, which means the idle probably every once in a while did a little search for it. All depends on the temperature. While you're here, I strongly recommend you take this coolant jacket off, clean it up and regasket it. You can almost see just a smidge. It looks like there could have been some coolant coming out at some point. 10 millimeter socket. There's only four of these mounting this coolant tube to the block. Okay, let me just lift that block right now. So there's the coolant jacket from cylinder head to cylinder, I mean block to block. O-rings definitely crushed. They're probably original. I like to take a wire reel. That way I can also see if it's pitted. If you have a wire wheel or a wire brush, take advantage of that. Clean all that corrosion off where the hose sits. Came out pretty good. Now I'm gonna do the bolts. So now I'm going to take the O-ring out. It's pretty hardened in there. Good, it's petrified actually. Look at that. Yeah, this has been leaking. 
Just probably seeping it up just enough. Oh, this is how stiff that is. That's how old it is. <laughs> so that surface is gonna get cleaned. So what I'm gonna use is a brass brush. Now I'll probably end up using this little pocket screwdriver. I'll spray some parts cleaner in there. See if I can get it down to a good surface before I reinstall the new O-ring. <laughs> so this is why you do all the gaskets when they're feasible. So I just took a little brake clean, parts cleaner, and I sprayed the rag to soak it in there. I just want to get any loose particles, pick that up. Here's the new gasket, as you can see, it's supposed to be round, not flat, <laughs> and you just seat them right in there. Now we're ready to place that down and put the four bolts in. I'm just gonna bottom them out with my speed ratchet. I'm doing a cross pattern. The torque specs on this crossover tube, they call a water tube, is five foot pounds. I'm gonna clean the intake surface before we put it up there with the new gaskets. I like to use my sanding block again, some emery cloth or a 400 grit sandpaper. Once again, I use a sanding block because it's a flat surface and this is aluminum. Uh, you don't want any grooves, you don't want it to be warped. I'm not planing off three thousandths of an inch here. I'm just getting the gasket surface clean. Some people use their air cookies, those air wizards. You can't do, really shouldn't do that. You'll end up damaging the aluminum. Nice smooth finish. I'll take the blow gun to that, blow any powder dust out. And while it's out, I'm gonna take the throttle body plate, give that a quick sanding. Now to install the intake gaskets, there are mounting pins, one here and one there. You can see them on the, on the head. So I'll just push that one down in first. Then I'll get that one. Everything lines up good. If I put pressure down right there, the bolt holes line up. And the ports are completely covered with gasket. So that's good. And I'll move over to this one. Line up the mounting pull pins. There you go. Now we can lift up the intake, bring it on up here. Okay, so the, you gotta force some of it in because of the, all the accessories that are still around here. So like this hose, this bracket I left attached. So I just had to get that out of the way. That's perfect. Yep, now everything lines up. Now don't forget this bolt over here that I took off after I unbolted the intake. So I'm gonna push that intake aside, reattach this bolt to this bracket. And it's a 12 millimeter socket. I'm just gonna tighten that right down. There is an actual stop, so it can't, it only has one place to sit. So that's kinda perfect for me. As I tighten it down, I'm gonna stop and Make sure I line up that bracket. Just snug it. Perfect. Now I line my intake back up. I'm gonna install the two, two center ones first. Just starting with my fingers. I'm gonna move over there to that center. There you go. 
gives you more freedom to make sure they seat properly. So there is no sequence other than I personally am going to say you do the center and then out and the torque is 18.4 foot pounds. I'm going to use my speed wrench and I'm just going to snug them down, all of them, until they bottom out. I'm going to go to the other side, do the same. Make sure that I don't feel them dragging, getting too tight. That would mean I need to loosen this side up and center everything again. All right, now I can get my torque wrench set up. Okay, 18.4 from the center bolts out. I'm gonna go over to the other center. You can hear the, uh, I can hear a little creaking and snapping of the intake settling. And on when I disassembled this, I found the intake gasket had a tear in it. So I'm pretty anxious to feel this puppy run. Okay, so now we start all over again. See that? That's why when torquing, always, always do it twice. Before I continue, now that the intake is installed, I want to take a moment and connect all my electrical connectors so there's no um, forgetfulness. And I get into the car, try to crank it, and the engine light comes on. It doesn't start. <laughs> so everything that I have connected to that I can connect before it's installed, I'm going to. This bracket, I'm not going to bolt it up. because I Well, actually I can. I thought it was in the way of the torque converter bolts, but it's not. It's got the cutout for the window, so perfect. We'll mount this up, and tighten that down. Okay, that's a 12 millimeter socket. There's no torque for this, it's just tighten it down. Here I have the coolant temp sensor right here. Snap that in, purge valve. This is the OP switch, which I have a new one, so I'm gonna, not gonna connect that. I'm gonna move over to the side of the head. There's the cam sensor. I've got grounds here. Before we install the harness grounds, I'm gonna clean up the mounting, get rid of any oxidization that happens with aluminum, and just age sitting. I just wanna make sure my grounds are good. It's not uncommon to see that as a running condition problem on some of these import engines. I'll clean up the connectors, just making sure there's no dirt. That's a 12 millimeter. I'm gonna bottom them out. And then I'm gonna torque these to 14 foot pounds. Now we're gonna install our emission tube. That's the EGR tube. Pay attention to the depth. You've got a shorter length here, longer length. This is inward, so the longer length is gonna go up top there. You might have to flex this. It is a tube that they like to spring load for some reason. Definitely do it by hand. Make sure it threads and seats by hand. This is not something you want to strip. It's a 22 millimeter wrench. We're gonna tighten up that emission tube. I'm just gonna snug it, then I'm gonna move down, make sure the side's snugged. Perfect. 
Now we're going to remount the coil to the intake using the three bolts that have a 10 millimeter socket head. Reinstall the spark plugs and the wires and route them. You're hooking up the chain. It's time to take it off the engine stand. So the challenge here is going to be making sure you line up these two bottom studs with that transmission. That's the hardest part of this. Checking to see how much further I got. So the good thing, the Subaru engine is pretty lightweight. So I do have a jack, don't forget, under the transmission. So I'm going to try to line this up. I might jack it up just a hair. Okay. And I'm happy with that. Let's see if I can that one. There we go. Might jack it up just a smidge. Looks real good. So now I'm going to lower the transmission with the floor jack and lower my crane at the same time. All right, so the tension's off the engine. Let's see if the motor mount fell into place. It needs to be, it needs to go back probably about maybe a half of an inch to eighth of an inch back for those motor mounts to fall in. So I'm going to bolt up my housing transmission to the engine, get all my bolts started, start them by hand. As you can see over there, I get more of a gap than I do over here. So once I put the bolts in, I might just fall into place while I'm tightening up. I think I'm going to tighten some of these top bolts. Nothing too crazy. I'm not, I'm not going to use an air gun. I'm going to use it by hand. See if I can bottom these out. Now that the engine's all lined up with the transmission, the motor mounts are just a smidge off from the slots, so I'm just going to go underneath and tap them and they'll fall right into the cross member bolt holes. There we go. Make sure that plate lines up. i got to get a pry bar, pull it back now. Just going to lift to support the engine enough so I can spin this plate. Now we're in place. I'm going to hold that and lower this down. Perfect. Put the 
motor mount nuts on. Both sides. Now I can put the bolts on the transmission studs, the nut, I'm sorry. So you get a flat washer and then the nut. Let's put those on. All the other bolts that I started by up on top, they look good. So now I'm just gonna get my air gun and tighten up the transmission housing bolts to the engine block. Now I'm going to line up the starter, reinstall the bolts, making sure that that ground wire is attached to the top bolt bracket. Now we're going to line up the torque converter bolts, mounting bolts. So I've got the flex plate in view and you have to put a 22 millimeter on the crank, turn your crank clockwise. So I've got the mounting bolt hole on the flex plate view, but I don't know if the torque converter bolt hole is lined up. So I'm gonna spin that by hand. I'm gonna get a mirror and use a mirror at the same time that I think will help. Okay. Now with the mirror there, I put my finger inside and turn the actual torque converter, transmission torque converter until I see thread bolts once you get one in, you're pretty much all set. Perfect. Now you have to um, tighten it up by hand. I'm just gonna bottom it out. I'm not gonna torque it yet. I'm gonna put all of them in, all four, and then go around and torque it to 18.4 foot-pounds. That's the manufacturer specs. Number two. You gotta be real careful here because you do not want to drop one of these bolts. There's two types of torque converter mounting methods. Some people use studs and you put the nuts on and some people use the bolts. The bolts are nicer because then you don't have to line up the studs to the torque converter to the actual flex plate while you're trying to line the engine up to the transmission. And you could do damage to your torque converter pump, transmission pump if you do not line them up properly. I want to show you something pretty neat about Subarus. So the main harness down here is bolted right here and right one over here with a 12 millimeter socket head bolt. You take these out. You can get to the torque converter nuts and bolts with an extension right through the middle, the front here of the intake. So if you're a guy with big hands and you're like, I can't get my hand in there, I'll show you a quick way. It would be easier torquing it also because then I'll have more throw with the torque, torque wrench. There we go. Now you can go right through the front here. So lift the harness upward and you can get it right out of the way. And now you can bottom these bolts out and you can turn it to the next one. I'm gonna put your harmonic balancer socket ratchet on reverse because you gotta 
cool the engine. Eighteen point four foot pounds. Take it off. Rotate this till we get to the next one. Now for safe precautions, you're gonna check all of them again. Go one more time around. So now you can reinstall the access rubber plug boot to the transmission. It snaps right down in there. I'm gonna remount the bolts for the wiring harness. So now we're gonna put the throttle body back in. I've got the gasket all lined up with the bolts on the actual throttle body. Pull this harness up. I just want to start it by hand. You don't want that gasket falling down or get pinched. That's a 10 millimeter socket. Torque specs for the throttle body is six foot pounds. I do it in a crisscross pattern. So I'm going to go from here and work my way around and start assembling all the stuff on those side of the body. So over here I have the coolant hose that goes to the throttle body. I have the connector. I have the other coolant hose. Make sure you put the clamps on. Then I have the main harness here. Pop the harness retaining clip up. So you line up the ears on this style. It pops right in. Then you pull down on this handle. It locks down. Then you can crimp this. Perfect. Now I have the power steering pump. You get three bolts for the power steering pump. The long one is going to go in this bracket. Don't forget to plug in the power steering switch. And we'll tighten that bracket down. It's a 12 millimeter socket. I snugged them, now I'm going to torque these to 18 foot-pounds. Now I'm going to line up my AC compressor. So I'm going to undo the bracket like I had to begin with to take the AC bracket out because the bolts are hidden down, mounting bolts, right here. So it saves a lot of time. I'll undo the bracket, take it out, mount it, then install it again. This bracket is where the engine crane attaches, so it has to be installed. That's why it keeps coming in and out. It's a 14 millimeter socket. I don't want that to fall into the radiator, so I'm gonna put that up there. So first thing I'm gonna do is put these in, line up the two bottom bolts. Put this bracket on. OK, 
Okay, now I can put the top bracket on. And now I can start the bottom one. Perfect. I have all the mounting bolts in place for this AC bracket. It's 14 millimeter. I'm gonna tighten them all down. I'm gonna torque all these mounting bolts to 23 foot pounds. Now I'm gonna hook up the fuel lines, the fuel return line and the fuel supply line. This is the fuel return. I'm gonna get a pair of pliers and put that on right away. I've put this connector on, hear it click. Now there is a lock pin for that. It's the plastic guide. So that goes like this, snaps into place. Work my way over here, came out of the bracket. Now I should have, that goes to the air box, but there's gonna be two coolant hoses down here. I'm gonna attach those. Make sure you just bottom them out. Put your clamps on. This is your brake booster vacuum line. Make sure that's seated all the way in. So now we're going to put the air box in. So this has, I'm going to mount this part over here. It's going to be a bit of a bugger. Let's make sure it's in on the bottom. Yep. So this has a guide for these two hoses to go right there. And we're going to make sure that throttle body hose is connected. This line goes there. Got a mounting bolt right here. Got another mounting bolt over here. There we go. There is another breather hose on the bottom coming out of the valve cover, going into the air box. Yeah, it's a thumb clamp. Make sure you squeeze it that clamp on and then make sure you connect your mass airflow sensor it snaps into place eight millimeter socket or flathead screwdriver make sure that's tight and then we have two minor screws which are 10 millimeter socket then we have the coolant fan. It's got the four blades and it's located on the driver's side of the radiator. So you got the piton air, two marks right there that you're going to hook up into the down below there on those brackets. There you go. And two mounting screws up here. They're just a little um, six millimeter bolts with a 10 millimeter head on. Get those started. Now make sure you connect your electrical connector for the fan. It's mm, located down here on the corner. Just trying to line it up with my one hand. Squeeze it together. Down below here you have these uh, plastic guides for the transmission cooler lines. They want you to put those right inside there so that they don't get hit by anything. 
Now we're gonna install the AC fan with the two little pitons. We're gonna mark, line them up with the mounting bracket down below. So you're gonna slide them right down in. Then you're gonna get the mounting bolts. They're six millimeter bolts with a 10 millimeter head for a socket. And then you're gonna hook up the electrical connector which is located down here in the corner. There we go. And snap it until it clicks. I'm gonna put the upper hose on, radiator hose. Okay. I'm just snugging it with this. Do not rank on them with an electric or air gun. Just snugging it down. To install the alternator, you line up this back bolt to that bracket, and as you can see, it's really tight going down. That's because all alternators have this spacer that is movable, but once it's tightened, a lot of people don't realize it moves. It's a floating bracket in there. So the way to do that, to loosen that up, is put it on a, a hard surface. You've got a vise or something, and I like to use a brass punch. And you line that up and hit it with a hammer. There you go, see how it's seated down? You can see the difference over here, it came out some. Now when we go to put that in, I'm not struggling with it. it falls right into place. Put the long bolt in. The bolt on that is designed to have a bracket on it, so it lines right up. So the nut won't spin because it has a, those ears on it that line it up. I'm just going to put my hand back there, make sure it starts, and guide it in. So now I can carefully mount my adjustable adjustable bolt. I'm not tightening this, I just want to get it snug. Now we have the long adjustable bolt, so that'll go up. You can't go this way, obviously it doesn't line up. You spin it around. It goes on the ear of the alternator, threads right in there. Both these mounting bolts are 12 millimeter socket. Just going to snug this bottom it out. I'm not going to tighten it because I'm going to have to make adjustments once I put the belt on. So this alternator has what you would call a belt guard. You see how there's two washers here? You have the big thick one that mounts against the alternator and that thin one. I like to put it right in between there. There we go. And that mounts there. I'm not going to completely mount that because I have to see the belt. Snugging it up. Perfect. So you want to make sure that the, your AC tensioner is adjusted enough so that you can get the belt over the AC pulley. So now harmonic balancer around the AC, and then there's the AC pulley. Now you're going to reverse the direction, and you're going to bring that long bolt down on that idler pulley for your AC belt or tensioner pulley. Make sure that all the ribs are lined up. And don't forget that once you tighten that pulley, the mounting bolt for that pulley, that's going to make it tight also. So what I'm doing is I'm, while I'm adjusting this, I'm spinning the belt side to side. I'm feeling the tension. I like it right there. I don't want it too tight, it'll burn out the bearings. So now I take a 12 millimeter socket and I'm gonna tighten up the mounting bolt. Install the alternator belt. I'm gonna go down over the harmonic balancer, power steering pump, and then over the alternator pulley. 
I'm gonna have to loosen up on the alternator a little bit more. Pretty much it. There we go. Now I can adjust this adjuster. Check your belt. Okay, I'm gonna leave it right there. And I'm gonna snug up the adjuster bolt mounting bracket. Now I can bring this bracket down and tighten up. Now you can mount the bolt on the power steering bracket. And then we have this cover that goes here and there, but first we're gonna bring the electrical over. I think I'm gonna bring this, yeah, routes, must route through here. Cause there's a connector here for the, this clamp thing goes around this oil pressure, I mean, oil fill. There we go. Like that. Connect the AC compressor. This mounting bracket goes there. Get the... Now we can plug in the internal regulator on the alternator, and we have the alternator nut already available to us because I left it right there, so I'm not fishing for it. That's why I like to do things like that. And that mounts right there. It's a 12 millimeter socket. You wanna make sure you hold onto that harness and just snug it. If you just rank on it, that's a copper bolt. It'll snap off inside the alternator. Now we can put that cover on. I've got a long bolt and a short bolt. The long bolt will go up here in the bracket because it goes down, it mounts into the, that belt guide. This is a 10 millimeter socket. Now I'm gonna put in the overflow tank. So you've got this pink on that is gonna mount up to that little ear mounting. There we go. So this is how you mount this. This slides into this bracket, and that is gonna be the mounting pin on this side. So you slide this in, and then push it down. And it's supposed to snap in there. Do you have to get the old manipulation tool? Pair of pliers. Make sure you connect it to the radiator. Let's mount our breather air box. This goes on the inside, there we go. So this push pins, they got these rubber bushings. I like to stick with the pins, but you need to take them off the pins and mount them in here first. Do that to both. Perfect, now we're gonna push the push pins in. I'm gonna mount the low radiator hose. I'm gonna put it on the radiator first. Make sure that's seated all the way down. And then I'm gonna mount it on the thermostat housing. There we go. Let's put the clamp on. Okay. I'm gonna prime the oil filter before I install it. Especially where this engine has been completely drained. When it was out, it was on a stand. We'll let that sit for a little bit, and we'll prime it some more. 
I'm gonna put these gaskets up in place. On both sides. Now that my oil filter is primed, take a bit of clean oil, put it on this gasket, and I'm gonna mount it up in there. Doing this before I mount the front pipe exhaust because it will be easier for me to snug it down by hand. Okay, I'm gonna line up the studs on the downpipe first so that I can make sure that goes in. There we go. Now it's that'll slide right up. Put a mounting nut on. And I'm just going to flex the flex pipe enough so that I can get the studs to line up. Okay, now I can put the lock nuts on the stud to the heads. These are all 14 millimeter socket, even these down ones. I'm just gonna snug these up until they bottom out. And then I'm going to use, tighten them by hand. So just using a 3 8 drive 14 millimeter deep socket, I'm gonna snug these bolts down. reason I don't use air is because these studs go right into an aluminum head and I don't want to take that chance. So now these have got a, your O2 sensors. The connectors are connected up on the top so I'm going to fish them up there and then connect them in because you can't reach the connectors from down here. And the front pipe is a 17 millimeter socket. Here we have our upstream O2 sensor and downstream O2 sensor connectors. I'm gonna connect them. This is really air fuel ratio sensor or upstream. Connects right there. And here we go. And here is the downstream O2 sensor. Let's install the battery. So now I'm going to clean the terminal ends. This is a battery brush. You can see how it works. To clean the cable end, you take the cover off of your battery tool and put it on the handle. And now you have the inside brush. And we're just cleaning the connection. Slide that down. And it's going to be a 10 millimeter socket. I like to put the cover on right away. See how you have a, a, sh a long L bracket and a short J bracket. The long one goes in the front, and the short one goes in the mounting in the back. You can see that mounting hole right there. I like to use a deep 10 millimeter socket. Clean the negative terminal. And make sure that's all the way down on the terminal on the post 10 millimeter socket or ratchet. Now let's add the oil. This takes four and a half quarts of oil. 5W30 is the manufacturer weight recommends. So you're going to top off your fluid, fill up the radiator. So now I've checked all my fluids, I filled my oil, I filled my coolant, my battery's connected. Now I'm ready to start my engine but because it's a disassemble I want to 
pull the fuel injection pump relay or the EFI fuse because I want to crank this over and get the pressure up before it actually starts up. So I'm going to pull, find the location of the EFI fuse or the fuel pump relay, whichever one I can find. Okay, fuel pump, 15 amp fuse. So if I go like this, it would be the bottom one right here. And here's my fuse puller. I'm going to pull that. There we go. I don't want to lose it, so I'm going to place it right there. Just cover that in case. And I'm going to crank my engine over. Now I'm going to replace my fuel pump fuse. Put the cover back on. And crank it over. Now we're gonna let the vehicle get to temp, check all the fluids while it's running. And if there are no leaks, everything's good, then it's time to put the splash shields back up and go for a road test. Thanks for watching. Visit us at 1AAuto.com for quality auto parts, fast and free shipping, and the best customer service in the industry.